I have something extremely significant that happened when I woke up on February 3rd. I woke up from a dream. Dream was like nothing else that I've ever dreamt before because what I saw in my dream was a picture of a DNA strand called a double helix. In my dream, when I saw this floating double helix DNA strand, it was floating in midair, I was shown to observe these lines right here. And so that's what I was looking at and pondering when this divine revelation came to me. And this is what led to something extremely profound that was revealed to me. The next thing that happened in the dream after observing those lines were the words, by his stripes we are healed. And oh my word, you have no idea the door that opened. This is what I wrote down about the dream. I woke up on February 3rd, 2019 with a dream. I saw in color a DNA double helix strand and was looking at the lines in it. Suddenly the words, by his stripes we are healed, came into my heart and mind. I suddenly woke up, but was kind of drowsy, and my computer was still playing, and it was on a video that I had not put it on because it kept going from video to video. I wasn't even looking at this type of video but it was playing healing scriptures like three hours worth. It was um, maybe this much into the video, like this much. Within a few moments of playing on my laptop, within about 30 seconds, this scripture, by his stripes we are healed, played and were sp the words were spoken aloud. By his stripes we are healed. Then all of this that I'm about to share came to me. That when they test for DNA, it's found in the white blood cells, not the red ones. But they take a sample, like Ancestry.com, they take a sample from the saliva in your mouth. They take a swab of the saliva and they test it and then they get genetic markers from that. Whenever the Lord's revealed something to me and truly revealed something, He shows me and backs it up with scriptures and then just astonishes me even more by proving this even more. So that's what I'm about to show you. The prophecy about Messiah in Isaiah 25, 5 about the glory of Zion says, Say to those with anxious hearts, Be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer and the mute tongue will shout for joy for waters will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And it goes on from there. It's 19 degrees, at least the last time I checked, but I am getting really cold, so I'm about to go inside and warm up a little bit and tell you more of the story. All right, that's better. Um, I'm going to be looking down, reading these scriptures. Okay, so I was talking about the glory of Zion. And now, 1 Peter 2, 21 through 25. I have to look down to read this, so forgive me if I'm not looking at the camera. Christ's example of suffering. This is about the Messiah. For even hereunto were ye called, because Messiah also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, 
should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. By whose stripes you are healed. For ye were a sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. So there we see that by Messiah's stripes we are healed. Now in my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, the Messiah, King of Israel, I go into depth talking about the stripes of the whip marks on Yeshua's back, the scourge marks, and that it was by those stripes we are healed. But there's a reason why this DNA is very significant in going further in depth about the stripes healing us and I'm going to share this with you and all the miracles that he performed that prove that the DNA of God is what healed these people because Yeshua the Messiah was the second perfect Adam who had no sin in him he was in the state that Adam was before the fall of man thus by Messiah's stripes the DNA of God in the Messiah, by His Spirit, restores the flesh. God's Spirit restores the flesh. And by His stripes, His DNA, the DNA of God, we are healed. And so when we believe in the Messiah, Yeshua, Hamashiach of Nazareth, the Jewish Messiah, that God came to dwell in with His Spirit... We have the promise that our flesh will be restored by his, the word of his mouth, by his stripes. We are redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And that blood contains the white cells that contain the DNA of God. And through this um, resurrection of the dead, when we hear the shepherd's voice, at the time of the resurrection of the dead, the dead will come to life that are in him because it contains the DNA of God. Therefore, when the Messiah comes to rapture the believers and we're changed, at that moment he changes our DNA. He resurrects the dead. They rise up first. Then those who are living and believe will rise up to meet the Lord in the air and we shall be changed because his promise of eternal life is within us as believers. Our DNA will be changed to live forever. To live forever because the DNA of God is changing us into a glorified state. Now let me give you scriptural proof. But first let me say that those who take the mark of the beast or the number of his name or the name of the beast, they will not have their DNA changed because they do not believe in the Lord God of Israel. They do not believe in the Messiah's redemption. The blood of his redemption and his Holy Spirit in us seals us for the promise of eternal life. Therefore, when we hear the shepherd's voice that we know because we follow him, we will be changed to eternal glorified state to live with the Lord God of Israel forever. But those who do not believe in his redemption and take the mark of the beast, which is the number of another god, the name of another god, which is actually Satan the deceiver, they will have their DNA be in the corrupted state, just like right now we're in the corrupted state. But we will be changed. The natural, there's a natural body and a spiritual body. There's a mortal body and an immortal body. And so he changes us into this glorified state to be like him. And therefore we're reconciled unto God from the curse of Adam being taken away. The Messiah is the second Adam who had no sin. So he restores us to that eternal state. And those who take the mark of the beast, therefore, will continue to live in the corrupted state. Therefore, because they did not accept the love of the truth, their DNA will not be changed. And
and therefore they will perish in their sins because they didn't believe God. Now let me share some of the miracles of Messiah Yeshua so you'll understand that this helix, I'm sorry, the double helix DNA strand in my dream shows the stripes that were healed by. It goes deeper than just the marks on his back, the whip scourge marks. It goes deeper into his blood, deeper into his white cells, into the DNA of God himself that restores us and heals us and gives us eternal life. Part of these miracles are in my book talking about this, but I didn't have this dream about the DNA until when I woke up the morning of February 3rd, 2019. So Mark 7, 31 through 37. By his stripes we are healed. This is talking about Messiah Yeshua and the miracles that he performed, thus proving that this is true about the DNA of God. This is talking about Messiah Yeshua, Jesus. Again, he, Jesus, went out from the region of Tyre and came through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee within the region of Decapolis. They brought to him one who was deaf and spoke with difficulty. And they implored him to lay his hand on him. Yeshua, Jesus, took him aside from the crowd by himself and put his fingers into his ears. And after spitting, remember, that's where they get the DNA from. The DNA of God was in Jesus' spit. After spitting, Jesus touched his tongue with the saliva and looking up to heaven with a deep sigh, he said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was removed, and he began speaking plainly, and he gave them orders not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them, the more widely they continued to proclaim it. They were utterly astonished, saying, he has done all things well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. By his stripes, this man was healed. The spit, the saliva containing the DNA of God that heals and restores all flesh healed this man. I am going to read to you the miracle in Mark 8, 22 through 30. A blind man healed at Bethsaida. And he, Jesus, came to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And Jesus took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he spit on his eyes, the DNA of God went on to his eyes, and he put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw aught, and he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. And what happened right after that miracle? After he spit on the man's eyes. We have Peter's confession of the Messiah. Simon Peter, I like to say Simon Peter because Simon is his first name and Peter is his last name. And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Who do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said to him, Thou art the Messiah. And he charged them that they should tell no man of him.
My friends, this is profound that God gave me this dream about the DNA stripes being the healing power, the DNA of God that came to dwell and live inside the Messiah. Now we go on to the miracle of the blind man in John 9, 1 through 41. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. He didn't have eyes to see when he was born. He didn't, he couldn't see. If he had eyes, he couldn't see, but he was born blind. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh, when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, the spit containing the DNA of God, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Shiloh, or Siloam, which is interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Now that's the pool that they unearthed, that they excavated and found that pool. And that's where the priests and all the people washed before going up the steps, up the pathway towards the holy temple so that they were cleansed. The neighbors, therefore, and they which were before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? And he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Shiloh, Siloam, and wash. And I went and washed. I think Siloam is the Greek version of Shiloh, the Hebrew. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And <clears throat> there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him? That he hath opened thine eyes, he said. He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind, but by what means he now seeth? We, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Messiah, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, He's of age, ask him. Then again they called unto the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, 
whether he be a sinner or not, I know not. But one thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they unto him again, What did he do to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? And then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin, but now you say we see, therefore your sin remaineth. And it goes on in chapter 16 to say, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in the door is the shepherd, by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake to them. After John the Baptist talked about Messiah Yeshua being the bridegroom, and he said, that the Messiah must increase while he decreases. He said this in John chapter 3, starting in verse 31. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen he hath heard. And he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth upon him. And the wrath would abide upon those who do not have the DNA of God, the promise of being changed into his glorified state to be like him. So the miracles I just discussed show that by his stripes we are healed, the DNA stripes and let me explain in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 about the resurrection of the dead. 
This is 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 35. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat, or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body, as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There's one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. So now the DNA of the corrupted type is when man fell because of the sin of Adam and Eve. The DNA was corrupted so that we would not live forever. But when the body is changed, resurrected, or raptured into the harpazo, we will suddenly be like him as he is, changing our corrupted DNA to the eternal non-corrupted DNA of God. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there's a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, the Messiah, was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. So right now we're in our natural bodies, corrupted by Adam's sin, Adam and Eve's sin. But we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb containing the DNA of God. And by His stripes we shall be healed. Our DNA will be healed to live forever. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth earthy, but the second man, the Messiah, is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, the corrupted DNA. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Our DNA... By his stripes we are healed forever. <laughs> in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Because they believed the Messiah redeemed us. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And... We shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Messiah, Jesus Christ, Messiah Yeshua. Therefore, my beloved brethren, 
Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 2 Timothy 2.19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Messiah depart from iniquity. But just looking through some of my mom's notes, and she had written down, <laughs> let me see, 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes we are healed. In Psalm 107, 20, God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. It was also a verse written down by my mom. Psalm 30, verse 2, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Psalm 147, 3, He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. Psalm 34, 18, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Now I'm going to share this note from my mom because she wrote down scriptures and things all the time on little pieces of paper. <laughs> and so she wrote, Saved from the wrath to come, which is known as the rapture, Romans 5, 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, that's Messiah, the Lamb of God, we shall be saved from wrath through him. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, Jesus Christ, Messiah, Yeshua. Because we have been sealed by His Holy Spirit for eternal life, because the DNA of God is in the Messiah that redeems us to God from the curse of Adam and Eve's sin. Knowing that in the DNA that's in the saliva, in the blood too, but it's not in the, the red blood cells, it's in the white blood cells. Listen to this verse in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So the DNA of God is in the white blood cells, not the red ones. The DNA of God that gives us eternal life through the Messiah, the second perfect Adam who had no sin because he was perfect. He saves us and changes us, makes us white like wool. Though our sins be as scarlet like the red blood cells, he gives us his DNA and we live forever. It is so amazing. We see in Psalm 51, 7, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hebrews 10, verse 7, Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, Messiah Yeshua, once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But this man, the second perfect Adam, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, 
sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering hath he perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Spirit also is a witness to us. For after that he hath said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Peter chapter 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus Christ, grace upon you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faith Fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God, through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And it's revealed right now. The DNA of God gives us eternal life through the Messiah, the second perfect Adam. Now, if God seals his servants with his DNA so that they may obtain eternal life, those who do not have it will not be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb because they reject His blood and they reject who He is. So basically, the Messiah repairs our DNA that was damaged from the curse. And that's why He is in the Strong's Concordance. That's the word Rapha. R-A-P-H-A and it means completely healed. He's the healer. He's the physician. He purifies us. He repairs us. And the Good Shepherd takes care of us. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So he's going to change our body. Well, this is very interesting. I was just reading some... Um, my mom would leave notes, <laughs> Bible notes. And when I was at lunch today, I was thinking of her, where she used to sit with me in the restaurant. And I just kind of said a little prayer um, to the Lord. And told him to tell my mom to never leave me, to let her always be, her presence be with me. And I just was passing through 
looking up these scriptures, and there's a little note that says, God is with us and will never leave. Isaiah 41, 10, and 13. God will never leave. What a beautiful message. Now, in Revelation 7, when we see the multitude that's from all nations and kindreds and people and tongues that stand before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palms in their hands. Well, later on we see where it says, uh, it's verse 13, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? In whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The white blood cells of the blood of the Lamb completely restores the body to a glorified state so that those who are resurrected and taken up in the rapture and those that have lived and never died, as Jesus stated to, um, I think it was Martha, well, they'll have their DNA changed to live forever in a glorified state because by the stripes of the DNA in the white blood cells of the perfect second Adam, the Messiah. God coming to dwell in the flesh to redeem us to himself has given us this glorified body that we shall have in the future. And all who accept it and believe will live forever. So I pray that you will give your life to Jesus Christ, the Messiah of Israel today. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords is coming. There's not much time left. Make sure you're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb so that you're spotless before Him because of His DNA changing you. So the stripes in the DNA, the strand of the double helix, the stripes in that, are what were in my dream, showing and revealing these things to me. Now, if we have a great multitude already in heaven, by Revelation 7, and all the judgments come after that, then the rapture would have to happen before the two witnesses come, because the two witnesses don't come until Revelation 11. And the multitude, all dressed in white from every nation, kindred and tongue, that had washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb, that made them white in His blood, with His DNA, they're already in heaven by Revelation 7. So this should give us great hope. There's one more interesting thing I'd like to mention about the DNA of God. As I was kind of pondering this about the DNA, it's interesting that I was thinking back a few years back when my mom was reading that little book by Colton Burpo that died and went to heaven and came back as four-year-old. Um, his father, Todd, wrote that book, Heaven is for Real. But it's interesting that the little four-year-old said that Jesus had markers and he pointed, you know, to where the nail scars were, you know. Well, he said in his hands, but it would have been in the wrists and the top of the feet. After the Lord gave me the dream showing me the stripes in the DNA strand, the double helix, I started thinking, DNA markers. Maybe there was a deeper meaning than what that little four-year-old knew. He said Jesus had markers. Now, of course, everybody took it to mean like the coloring type markers, like red marks where his wounds were. But what if this wasn't revealed to him? He just used the word markers. 
and there is such a thing as DNA markers. So Jesus, this is another sign to me, having this revelation that the DNA markers, the DNA being repaired by the Lord, because we believe in the blood of the Lamb and have accepted Him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Jewish Messiah, the King in the line of the tribe of Judah, and of the house and lineage of King David, the Messiah, the Lord God of Israel, came into that line, so that line could be established on the throne forever. So that DNA and his DNA markers <laughs> are what heal us, that he restores our DNA from the corrupted state and turns us into a glorified being. When, when the resurrection and rapture happens, we're changed to be like him and we will be like him as he is in a glorified state. And what a beautiful revelation. And thinking about Colton Burpo saying that Jesus had markers, but he didn't know the meaning of it. I don't think he ever grasped the concept. But that word markers came to me when I had this dream the morning of February 3rd of 2019. It's pretty astounding, and I hope that you're blessed by this true divine revelation that the Lord gave me. God bless you, and if you haven't given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you want to live forever, repent of your sins and believe on Him. Be baptized, water submersion baptism, and in His name, and you shall be saved. It's a promise and a blessing. And this is just one more revelation before this magnificent event happens that's known as the Blessed Hope. So the Lord said to comfort one another with these words that the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice from the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Messiah shall rise first and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord therefore he said comfort one another with these words and so we are to comfort each other and this is just one more divine revelation that astounds me because the white blood cells in the blood contain the DNA of God and we will be made white as snow just like he his hair and the hair of his head is white like wool white as snow because we've been washed in the blood of the lamb our heavenly garments will be white as snow with his white blood cells giving us the DNA of God to live forever. By his stripes we are healed and that was my dream. What a blessing.